Welcome to Edit Share. In this video, we'll look at Airflow. Airflow is our web-based interface for enabling remote collaboration workflows. When a user logs into Airflow, they'll see all of the storage locations that the administrator has given them permission to see. If you know the folder structure, you can certainly browse right to the folder you'd like to work with and start working with those clips right away. You can also do a search. A quick search is going to search every metadata field of every asset that you've been given permission to see. That could be the file name, but it could also be any of the custom metadata you may have tagged. If that gives you too many results, you can also do an advanced search. So whether you search for clips or whether you browse to them, once you find the material you'd like to work with, you can play those files here in the web browser. The proxy files that Flow generates are time code accurate, frame rate accurate, and split up to eight channels. In addition to playing the file in real time, you can also add markers with your M key or by clicking on marker. This is going to allow you to color code and comment on the markers. And now those markers are searchable on their own merit. A marker in your search results would be indicated by a colored dot on the clip. And this can take you right to that marker. In addition to watching the clip, adding markers and updating metadata, you can also create a project in Airflow. And when I create a project, I give it a name. By default, anyone in the Flow environment can see this project. I could also allow it only to selected users. I could also keep it to myself, and now I have a private project. Within a project, I can create bins. This should let me start categorizing and organizing my material. As I find clips that I would like to add to my project, I can simply drag those over into the root of the project or into one of the bins. Once clips or assets are added to a project, you can open them in the viewer. You can also start pulling subclips now. You can use the in, out, and plus keys to create a subclip. So while a file is playing, if I mark in, mark out, and click plus, I've now created a subclip. We know it's a subclip indicated by this blue ribbon. A subclip can also be renamed and given its own metadata. And now that subclip is also searchable on its own merit. Within a project, I can also create a sequence. Let's call this sequence Airflow Demo. Because we're in Airflow, which again is a web-based light client, our sequence will be limited to one video track cuts only. But now that I have a sequence, I can start dragging clips into the sequence icon here, or I can drag them down into the sequence tray. I can also add subclips or bytes to my sequence. Once assets are in a sequence, I can reorder them. I can play my sequence here. And in addition, I can of course add markers and comments. If a user is given permissions to do so, they can also download and upload files. For instance, if I selected these clips and I wanted to work with them at home, I could select the clips, download the proxy media or the high-res assets. Similarly, I can also upload. If I had cut in Premiere at home with the proxy files, I could upload my project file back to the server. Choose my storage destination of choice, perhaps tag that with metadata on the way in, and push it up to the server. And this is Airflow, the light web-based interface into your Flow Asset Management System. For more information or to get started using Flow, please contact EditShare.